think from our aql but this world of iman requires a a different ability requires the use of the heart in which the heart has a tremendous love for the divine the presence and that reflection that comes out with the perfection of the divine the presence for sayyidina muhammad the most perfected of creation that is the reflection of what Allah wanted to be known by. That love when it blossoms within the heart they begin to move towards the world of faith and faith is not something that we understand from the material world. When they teach us to die before you die it's not a concept that people are comfortable with or their brain can understand that, how am I supposed to shut off? How am I supposed to keep thinking myself as something non-existent? And how am I supposed to function at that point? And they come into our life and teach us that as the seed always wants to be a seed and it doesn't believe that if it should be buried under dirt that something magnificent will sprout from it. But by Allah's might and majesty He throws the seed into the dirt. The dirt will rip apart the seed and a new creation will appear and the seed is no longer present. Means from every opening Allah will open something greater. When you take this existence that we have, this nafs that we have and all that we have and you put it on the table and say, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm, I'm really believe I'm nothing and that I'm in the way of everything. My thought, my marks, my brain is my biggest enemy. It's blocking me from realizing your realities. My wants, my desires are in continuous conflict with your want and your desire for me, hence the difficulty with Divinely Presence. Because if you're a servant that doesn't think anything and doesn't want anything and happy with everything you would be awliya and you would have reached wilayat. Don't put a thought to anything. It is what it is, we merely put the sail and Allah sends the direction. There's nothing to think about the past, the past has already been written, you cut the string. There's no need to worry about the future, it's not in your hands. As the past wasn't in your hands, the future is most definitely not in your hands. If you cut those two ropes you will elevate, levitate, your soul will fly. Because you're not bound by these two satanic grisps, grasps that shaitana is continuously putting upon the people of belief to keep thinking about the past, argue about it, be angry about it, look over all the issues and preoccupy your whole life about the past of what he did, she did, somebody did. And preoccupied with the future, what does the future behold? And they come into their, our lives and teach us absolutely nothing. It's the easiest future to worry about. Ah, okay, no need to worry about anything. Why are you worried about your computer degree? What are you worried about? Nothing. Teach yourself to not have stress, there's nothing to worry about. What been written for you has been written. Nobody can change it, nobody can help it. So they lived a life per day. Every day they tried their best to live a life just for that day. Ya Rabbi it's a new day. What does this day behold for me and give to me? If they cut the two ropes they should feel the presence of that day, the tajalli and the energy of that day, the might and the majesty of that day. They live within Allah's moment. And the concept of, of getting myself out of the way is that I truly believed I was my biggest enemy. If I vanish 
Then they come and teach, then you realize that you are a drop and as soon as you make yourself to vanish, you actually reappear in an ocean. When you realize that my drop has no strength, because this world tells you you're strong, you're beautiful, you're, you're, you, you have a brain, you have everything. They glorify a drop and as long as you believe in that drop, glorify that drop, you lost the power of the ocean. And Allah says, with all your might you think you have something? So awliya come into our life and teach, oh, I've got nothing, I'm nothing. Whatever I think I know, I know nothing. Whatever it is, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, ana faqeer billahi ta'ala. No matter how much Allah gave of wealth, I have nothing in your wealth. I have no brain in your comparison, I have nothing, nothing, nothing. Then the drop hit into the ocean. As soon as it hit into the ocean, in the midst of their zikr of nothingness, they immediately felt everything. If you take yourself out of these programs, take yourself out and be nothing, you can feel the ocean of what's happening here. As long as you are confined within yourself and your want and your desire, you feel absolutely nothing and you're wondering, why am I sitting here so long my butt is hurting? The floor is hard. Right? If you vanish from it, you say that I'm absolutely nothing. You entered into an ocean, and that ocean, every vibration, every energy, every power, everything is emanating. These servants of nothingness, they tell people in dunya they're nothing, but be very careful for them because they see with the sight of Allah. They hear with the hearing of Allah They speak through the qudra and the power of Allah Their hands are upon the hands of Allah and their feet move in the direction Allah want them. It's Hadith al-Qudsi that when my servant finish their fard, approach me with their voluntary worshipness, I'll be all their faculties as they annihilate and what happens is actually the reverse of their annihilation, every power begins to dress them. They see beyond what they imagine their eyes could see because they see through their heart and through their soul. They hear beyond what hearing. When they tell you that the light of a star takes 3,000 light years to reach to you and the hat, the hat and the limit of a star is still in sama, it's not in the heavens and takes you a thousand light years to reach to you this light of a star coming and within a less than the blink of a thought they are in Divinely Presence. How? With what speed they went into that presence? With what speed their soul is moving immediately in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in the heavens, not only in Medina. What power Allah gave to their soul beyond the understanding of their sciences. As soon as they annihilated, they heard with that power, they saw with that power. It's not their frail little hands that people should worry about, but the hand that is upon their hand. It was not you who threw, but it was we when Allah says, believe it doesn't need anything to throw at somebody. Allah merely tells him, pick up that rock and throw it and half the world can vanish from just that rock. It's Allah's might and Allah's power but now nobody has that. They rely upon their own power and that's not what they're asking. For the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi and the way of haqqaiq is that annihilate yourself. Yourself is going to get in the way. Anybody who doesn't annihilate themselves, the dunya will annihilate you, don't worry. It's all coming down. But lucky for those who can annihilate themselves, Ya Rabbi Anna, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. You don't need to send a sludge hammer to hit me in the head, sledge or sludge. <laughs> sludge hammers is with sludge. Sledge is I don't need to be punished by Allah to, to believe, I believe. <laughs> I don't need you to crush me, I don't need you to crush my fingers and somebody to torture me, I will torture myself. 
I will annihilate myself, I will put hardship upon myself, I will struggle to do what, I, what you asked me to do. Then they began to vanish from themselves, everything became bitter, every taste became bitter for them. They find that sense is going and in reverse they thought, oh my god how am I going to release and let go of everything and as what they found the grace and the majesty of Allah is actually they let go and Allah opened everything for them. He didn't leave them empty, oh I'm just like a dead carcass, I'm going to sit in my living room and then what's my family going to do, how they're going to feed myself, how the family going to feed me <laughs> because Allah made me to be a dead carcass. The, the concept in the mind is not registering. What does the shaykh mean by being nothing? They're teaching, be nothing, be nothing. Know that in the face of this absolute greatness of Allah we are nothing. There's no power, there's no might, there's no help without Allah And then we became nothing, nothing. The more you believe it, the more you practice it, the more you understood it, as soon as you become nothing you feel the immensity of the power. Your ears begin to hear, your eyes begin to hear, begin to see, your hands begin to feel. And this is the world of faith and iman. Just like when they tell you, give and support, Shaykh I don't have it right now but when I do I will give. It's not a casino. You don't put the chip down and say, wait till it comes and then Allah will take His share. Faith is that, no, you do all the time. You do it especially when you don't have it. You do, you give, you serve. You don't have the time, serve. You don't have the money, give because it's a sign from faith. Allah wants the faith. Allah wants to see what's your belief in everything. You do what you do out of the belief and they found the fountain of abundance open for everything, everything open. And this was? the station of Iman. Iman was not to wait till you see it and then cut it into pieces and say, here's, here's your share. Faith was that, no, I don't see anything Ya Rabbi and I'm putting all my belief into you. And Allah says, I'm the best of those to put your faith and trust into. If you put your faith in me, your trust in me, you want protection from me, you want my nazar, you want my satisfaction and you lived your life believing that, your reward will come from Allah and they can leave the station of, Is of Islam and begin to enter into the maqam al-iman. Maqam al-iman is a light and a nur that has to enter into the heart and that they operate from this light and from that reality. We pray that in these holy nights when we watch the difficulty of the world, we are peace-loving people. When you watch the difficulty of a world, you find that the world is in a phase of sickness. It's not a youth growing up, looks like it's an old man about to die. You don't put all your bet on an old man who's <laughs> dying. If it was something young and youthful, it's, oh it's got a long time to go. No, no, this earth looked like he's going. If so, don't put all your hopes in that earth. Understand that, oh my God, why am I focusing in my life? That I should be building my akhirah, I should be building my reality, I should be building my soul, I should be focusing on how to bring that light and that power of the soul out and am I good with Allah And not only am I good with Allah for if you're good with Allah you should have an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad If you don't have that love for Sayyidina Muhammad you're not there yet because Allah Zawajal, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ قُلْ Allah's divinely called to Prophet essence and reality, tell them if they want my love, if they want my love to hibbuna Allah fattabi'uni. Your whole life is fattabi'uni, every essence is based on fattabi'uni, every reality is based on fattabi'uni. Then Allah grants, Yuhibbakumullah, that Allah will grant. If the following was sincere and correct, Allah grants divinely love upon that servant. 
and Ghafoor Raheem that every difficulty to be washed and to be forgiven because of Allah's love upon the servant. When Allah loves the servant, dresses that servant from that Divinely love of hope, of course He's going to wipe away every sin and every imperfection within that reality. That's what we're in need of for these days that are coming. Not bad people with rotten hearts and rotten character. They say these, these Zahri Alams, they're going to be the biggest one against Sayyidina Mahdi because their mind has no faith in their heart and their mind is overly active. And they're going to try to look at everything from external to judge the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi and they're the ones whom are going to be the most opposed to his arrival. So it means this way is the way of the heart, this is the way of muhabbat and love. We pray that Allah dress us in these months and dress us with these lights inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yahsifu wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.